back to order and say it's welcome back to the boardroom. It's very nice to see everyone. We will uh, begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Mrs. McLean, may I have a roll call, please? Yeah. Mrs. McGinnis? Here. Mr. Heyer? Here. Ms. Crane? Here. Ms. Catalina? Here. Mr. Need? Here. Mrs. Egan? Here. Mrs. Horst? Here. This meeting is a meeting of the Board of Education and Public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public community hearing. There is time for public participation during the meeting as indicated on the agenda in items three and nine. Item two is approval of the consent agenda. May I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Education approves the consent agenda as presented. Support. Are there any questions or discussion on the consent agenda? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item three is citizens' request to address the board. You are given two opportunities to address the board. Under item 3.1, you can request to address the board on any topic that's on tonight's agenda. Under item nine, you are welcome to address the board on any topic. When making comments, please state your name and then direct your comments to Mrs. Kelly Horst, President, Clarkston Board of Education. And I don't see any citizens that have joined us here in the boardroom tonight, but there are several who are attending by Zoom. And so I will give everyone a moment to see if anyone would like to address the board on topics that are on tonight's agenda. Mrs. McLean, is it possible to share the agenda real quick? Oh, Thank you. And so for now, when we are in this hybrid format, uh, for those of you joining us by Zoom, we will still follow, sorry, we'll still follow that same format that you need to click on the participants buzz button and then the raise hand feature. And right now I do see one citizen who is requesting to address the board. Mrs. McLean, can, when you share the screen, I lose the list of attendees. Can you still see his name? It was Daniel Fry. Right. And, it, and if we could just activate him real quick and find out what uh, item number he wishes to address us on. Good evening. This is Daniel Fry. Can you hear me? I can. And so, Mr. Fry, what agenda item do you uh, wish to address the board for? I'd like to address the board regarding the preceding presentation, uh, although I can't find it on the agenda, so perhaps I should wait for the section nine. Yes, part. please. Okay, so I will make a note when we get to item nine, um, we will come back to you. So if you just re-raise re your hand, or I guess just leave it raised, and so when we get to item nine, I'll call on you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Ms. McLean, is there anyone else who has raised their hand? Okay, great. Item four is our superintendent update, Dr. Ryan. Thank you, President Horst. Uh, first of all, on a couple positive notes, I would like to uh, congratulate Ms. Natalie McGowan, a social worker here uh, in Clarkston who has been awarded uh, the Oakland County Award for Social Worker of the Year, which is uh, quite an honor looking at, you know, as we've been pushing major uh, along the road path of social emotional health as being major uh, plank within our strategic plan and what we're holding true within Clarkston. Uh, to see she's being recognized by her colleagues uh, statewide is, is quite not only a, a shout out to her, but just representing Clarkston, which I'm so proud of her. So I would like to make that because I think we need to keep these positive points uh, in our front view you know, as we continue to push forward. Uh, also positively, I'd like to tell our board and our community that <clears throat> Mr. Lucido and Ms. Mahoney and I are in the process uh, of going to every department, school, and corner of the district uh, to share updates and to collect feedback from our staff. And uh, uh, thus far, we're in our second week, and it's it's been a great, great journey. And uh, I 
think it's incredibly important that our administration and, and our board um, keeps that contact as we go through not only in, in a COVID type year and, and all the ups and downs we have, but in a larger degree also to make sure that we keep on the same page as the organization, preserving uh, the wonderful culture and everything that we built and all the shoulders that we stand on uh, this evening to be here. So, so far I report that our, our morale with our staff is high, fully capable. They are uh, excited to be working with kids and they're doing a wonderful job bringing it every day. And uh, I, I can't say enough how proud I am of our, of our teachers, custodians, and we'll be seeing when we go to the bus drive or bus drivers, but you know, from our contacts, have been very, very positive. So that's all going really well. Um, obviously, we're back into our second week of being fully back in school, and so far, so well. Um, we're still in a position, if you look at the overall uh, rates in Oakland County, although they're very low, uh, they began last week to start to creep back up again. Um, they're not back up and alarming. It's not shooting exponentially, but there is an increase uh, over the last two weeks in the county. And in Clarkston, last week, we were still on a downward track. And this past week, we turned the corner to slightly start to curve up from that very bottom um, that we had reached. Now, talking to our epidemiologists in Oakland County, uh, their feeling is that it remains to be seen what's going to happen next. We hit, 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 hit a relatively low level and now we're going to plateau at that and kind of just dipping up and down around there or will this uh, mark a potential uh, change and increase again uh, to some level. Some of the variables out there related to it are along the lines of the potentials for the variants that uh, have been found in different parts of the country and a couple in Michigan. If that is becoming a new spread factor. Uh, on the downward pressure, there's also the fact that we're aggressively continuing to uh, vaccinate individuals. Uh, we're at a point now that we basically have almost, I won't say 100%, but near 100, getting close to that mark in Clarkson with our teachers for at least one shot. And then uh, by spring break, I would say that we'll have most of our majority of our teachers with two shots in them. So that, that means that we have a fairly high protection, not only in terms of transmission disease and protecting our staff, but also along the lines that we can avoid quarantine at least our staff members uh, to keep some level of continuity of our schools open, which is incredibly important. So with all these, these factors going on, uh, the best thing I can report this week is that we need to continue to monitor. Uh, in the past, what we found is, you know, as rates creep up, uh, the amount of quarantining and everything falls with it. And this has been so far no change uh, from uh, what we followed from uh, September to present. You know, when rates were, were creeping up higher and higher in the fall, we were experiencing greater and greater numbers of quarantining and closing buildings. And then uh, matching that right now with decreased rates, we're exactly where we should be, which is in school. And we're experiencing a more limited, not zero, but definitely only a partial portion of what we were experiencing in the fall. So it's very reflective of what's going on in our community. <clears throat> My hope is, as we move towards spring break and afterward, is that that, that nexus, that meeting of the points between number of individuals in our community vaccinated versus the actual um, pathway of COVID within our community hit kind of a wall to where we get that magical decrease because we kind of have that, uh, you know, that term herd immunity or immunity where it's not affecting within our community any longer. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm always optimistic. I'm never going to lose that fact. Uh, but I do feel like we just need to continue to monitor it, you know, because we are a cog in a greater community and we have a responsibility to continue to, to react along with it. Um, at this point, I say very clearly to our staff and community, there's no immediate plans that we're um, thinking that we're in any type of crisis to worry about closing down. That would be hopefully far in the future, but if ever, uh, if that happened. Uh, but I'll continue uh, week to week and to our board at our, at our meetings to give uh, updates. I would imagine that I'm pretty confident that we have really no immediate worries till at least the next board meeting in which I'll give an update that evening to kind of tell you the direction of what's going on. Is there any questions from any of our board members on that portion of the update? Okay, thank you. And I also want to shout out to our middle school staff, Nancy Mahoney, you know, again, as we're sharing with the board, I'm very, very excited uh, to be uh, working on that revisement in terms of our transition to middle school. And just as a final note to that, talking to my fellow superintendents in Oakland County who made this move, uh, you know, the response was, you're gonna really get to see how many more students are in your advanced classes and, and doing well as they go through the program. They didn't see negatives, they saw it as growth in the number of, of, 
of students in their districts uh, entering more challenging programs. So I just want to add that I'm excited about seeing Clarkson students challenged and, and moving further within our program and doing it the right way. So uh, thank you, President Horace. That, that would conclude the kind of update for this evening. Right. Thank you, Dr. Ryan. Uh, item five is presentation items. We have one tonight. 5.1 is our technology refresh and update. Uh, Dr. Ryan, I'll let you introduce Mrs. Harrison. Angel Harrison, our, our Director for Technology, is going to share a little bit along the bigger vision. For, as our community knows, we moved to a one-to-one -one platform at uh, the beginning of the last school year in an effort to provide that uh, distance learning as effectively as we could. I, I was incredibly proud at the speed and how succinct uh, that incredible movement was overall. But now we're in a great position not only to be a one-to-one -one district, but we're also need to simultaneously start to look forward and what that means in terms of our total cost of ownership and maintaining that and what it means in terms of, of what the uh, we'll call it the resources required to support it and the vision behind it uh, as we progress in the future. So Ms. Harrison is going to run through um, the elements of that and be able to field your questions and any specific elements of the technology package. So thank you Ms. Harrison. Good evening. So uh, we're going to run through this um, presentation real quick. Uh, this is the one that we always go through. It's kind of a living uh, presentation of just the technology projects that we accomplished and what we're working on uh, through the bond project. So the first slide is the network switches and um, the wiring closets. It shows the work that we completed. The network core and firewall switches, um, the core switches are what is on the agenda for approval tonight. Um, the firewall, we had to rebid because of some E-rate issues, and so we're opening that bid on March 15th. We planned on doing this in the summer of last year, and then COVID hit, and you know everything kind of <clears throat> stopped. Um, but if you remember, these are the switches and uh, firewalls that we updated prior to the bond. So we updated those in 2015, <clears throat> and now we're circling back around uh, to complete the core switches at the secondary buildings and some wireless access points that are now at end of life. Um, all of the, the new switches, uh, the phone system and all of that, you're all aware of all of that. And so if we go to the next slide, um, the classroom audio visual, we completed all of these projects in 2018 and 2019. Uh, the computing devices, um, so we were pretty close to being done with those, and then of course COVID hit, and now uh, we went one-to-one, -one, and so we purchased um, additional devices for students, we purchased devices for teachers, and we purchased classroom Chrome boxes um, that were beefier because of all of the multi-party video conferencing that they were doing. They needed something, <coughs> excuse me, something faster and better. Uh, and this is a snapshot of the budget. The last slide there. <coughs> so I'm going to go through this kind of with the spreadsheet. So if you can pull up the spreadsheet, Heidi. So this spreadsheet uh, shows two different snapshots. The top part of the spreadsheet shows what our budget and refresh would look like before COVID hit. And so we had planned on having about $2 million left uh, at the end of our bond projects that we would use for refreshing devices, um, doing these core switch and firewall uh, and wireless updates and we would have that $2 million to be able to do all of that. This just shows um, what we spent in technology on this bond, which is about $10 million, and if we were to refresh this technology without using bond dollars in the future, the amount across the bottom where it says annual budget contribution is the amount of money that we would need to put into the general fund to be able to refresh everything that we did in this bond. And so if you go down to the next part of the spreadsheet, 
So because of COVID, we spent about almost $2 million, probably about $18, $1.8 million on devices uh, for students, um, for staff, for the classrooms. And that really kind of ate away at what we were planning on doing with, you know, refresh dollars and, um, and these course switches and stuff. There's a little bit of money left over that we're using on these course switches in conjunction with some E-rate dollars um, to be able to finish up the network infrastructure. But what this shows is that if we want to continue our one-to-one -one initiative, the plan would be kindergarten through first grade gets an iPad, so they're only kind of on a three-year track. And then second grade through 12th grade has a Chromebook. So when those youngsters hit second grade, they're all going to require a Chromebook. So in year 2023, we will need to purchase Chromebooks for all second graders. <clears throat> those second graders will use those Chromebooks until they get to eighth grade is the plan. And then th that same year, we would need to purchase new Chromebooks for all eighth graders. So moving forward, in order to maintain a one-to-one -one device distribution starting in year 2023, we would need to purchase Chromebooks for second grade and eighth grade. The iPads is because it's only for three years is on a different track, so we would need to purchase those every other year. We would hand down the first grade iPads, you know, down to those youngsters coming in and rotate them through until they were at end of life, and then we would need to purchase new ones. <clears throat> so if you scroll down just a little bit more, Heidi, Okay, so um, what this shows is what we would have to put in general fund to be able to refresh everything that we refreshed with the bond and continue the one-to-one -one program. So uh, Carl and I worked on these numbers together and we wanted to make sure that, that you were also aware that there are items in technology that were not spent out of this bond. Some of them were spent in operations dollars, such as the security camera systems, the door access hardware, or the door access systems, the, the lighting, uh, the upgrade of the new PAs that we did across the district. Um, those were not spent from the technology bond dollars, but they are technology, and they touch our technology, and they are required in, on the back end and, and different things. And so we wanted to make sure that you were aware that those items are not included in that upper um, refresh dollar number. And then tonight, uh, what we're asking to approve is the core switches, those switch stacks, and the wireless access points that are at end of life. <clears throat> so what happens is, as everything starts upgrading and technology keeps moving along, when we do these core switches, we have to upgrade the back end to our wireless and when we upgrade the back end to our wireless, we have about 100 wireless access points that will no longer attach. So we have to get those upgraded, and that's part of this approval. <clears throat> the firewalls, which will bring probably early April, um, those will also be have some E-rate money with them. Um, and the firewalls, again, are required because they are going to be at end of life because we upgraded them through. The devices that we're asking to purchase tonight are spares. So I don't know, um, did we share the repair link with you guys? Okay. <clears throat> so we're at about 400 devices. You know, <clears throat> we have uh, one of our media techs, Vani, I don't know if you know her, um, but she comes over and she gets on the phone and talks to Dell or whoever and goes through the steps that she has to take before she can box that Chromebook up, it's about 30 minutes, mail it back to them, get it back, do everything that we need to do with it before we can get it back out into the hands of the students. And so we need these devices so that we're um, more efficient at making sure kids who have one-to-one -one devices that, you know, they can say, oh my gosh, this is not working, and we can go, okay, here you go, you know, we can fix that device and 
um, everybody can go on about their day. <clears throat> and so that's what the device refresh is. The device, not refresh, but the device approval is. And that's it. What questions for Mrs. Harrison? Ms. McGinnis, go ahead. I'm wondering of the anticipated dollars from the federal government for COVID relief and COVID supporting, if there's anything there we can use to, to either reimburse do bond dollars spent for technology or for refresh. Uh, I know that there was some COVID money. Uh, we spent some of that on um, the GoGuardian that we purchased. Um, Mary Beth would probably be a better person to speak to how, how that went. I think they are expecting some more dollars and we may be able to use those to reimburse bond with um, technology. Mrs. Rogers, is that something you can address right now? Is Thank you. At this, at this point, we spent all the money we received, majority of it on personnel. We were able to move a lot of personnel into the federal dollar. So would I be correct in saying that the dollars that have yet to be distributed by the Michigan legislature that I believe was approved but may be on the governor's desk is not part of the dollars um, that are currently in any budget line items? No. We received about five million, over $5 million this year. That's been all accounted for by moving salaries. The majority of it's been salaries. We did some, um, some supplies and equipment. Um, I don't have a, I don't know a lot about this and Steve, if you know more, please help me out here. So these are dollars that were approved in the prior administration. Okay. Not in the current Biden administration. These are dollars that were approved in the president Trump administration that are still being held hostage by our current legislature based on a tie bar to its distribution. And, uh, to my knowledge, those two bills I believe have not yet been signed or any line item vetoes have come from the governor regarding the disbursement of those dollars. So that's the money I'm speaking of. I don't know how that money is allocated and required to be spent. Should it have any um, requirements of how and where it can be spent, but that's the dollars that I'm speaking to. I follow you there. So, so I, I guess my only point just is, and I follow you there. So I understand that. So my only point is as we move forward, um, depending on the priorities that we might have in the hopper regarding COVID expenditures, I wonder how we might be able to allocate some of that to technology. I mean, that will be up to you. This year we used it for personnel, so. Thank you. But, yeah, and it hasn't really been clear yet on how we're going to be allowed to spend it. The new, the new stuff that hasn't been allocated yet. Thanks, Mary Beth. Thank you, Ms. Rogers. Any other questions or comments for Ms. Harrison? <clears throat> thank you. All right. Thank you so much for the overview. I think one thing it is clear though is we're in the one-to-one -one bed now. I mean, we're in the game. 
We're in so, the game. Yeah, so I, I mean, we're looking at the, the top budget is there, but I mean, for all practical purposes, we're, the bottom budget is, that's what we're, that's what we're looking at, right? Okay. No surprises. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, we move on to uh, action items. Item six and uh, trustees, we have a lot of those, so uh, obviously I'm going to need a lot of motions and a lot of seconds, please. <laughs> Item 6.1 is approval of personnel changes. May I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Education approves the personnel changes as listed on the attached sheets. Support. Are there any questions or discussion on personnel changes? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Item 6.2 is approval of the extended COVID-19 learning plan. May I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Education approves the district's extended COVID-19 learning plan as presented. Support. Sup uh, and I remember this is our monthly approval as dictated by the legislature. And I believe the only update this month is the note that we have returned our secondary um, buildings to five full days of learning. Are there any other questions or discussion on this approval? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item 6.3 is approval of the sponsorship agreement with La Fontaine Automotive Group. May I have a motion, please? I, I move, move that the Board of Education approves the sponsorship agreement with La Fontaine Automotive Group for the district's social emotional therapy dog program as presented. Support. Are there any questions or discussion? I would just like to give a really nice warm appreciation to La Fontaine for this five year, $20,000 a year pledge to support our school district's health and welfare like this. I think this is just totally um, all about community and partnership and I really, really appreciate them stepping forward and taking care of this for us. Thank you. Yes, agreed. Other comments? Thank you, Mrs. McGinnis. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item 6.4 is approval of Chromebook purchases. May I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Education approves the purchase of 315 Chromebooks from CDWG in the amount of $96,705. Support. Are there any questions or discussion on Chromebook purchases? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item 6.5 is approval of core switches purchase. May I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Education approve the amount of $420,254.69 to Delta Networks for infrastructure upgrades. Support. Are there any questions or discussion on the approval of core switches? All in favor say aye. 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 Sorry. Any opposed? The motion carries. Item 6.6 .6 is approval of flooring replacement at North Sashaba Elementary. May I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Education approves the flooring improvements at North Sashaba Elementary School to DF Corporation, DBA DF floor, cor DF floor covering in the amount of $110,338 as presented. Support. Are there any questions or discussion on the flooring replacement approval? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item 6.7 is approval of memorandum of understanding regarding the Safe Routes to School program. May I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Education approves the memorandum of understanding regarding the Safe Routes to School program and cost sharing as presented. Support. Are there any questions or discussion regarding this MOU? And Doctor, I know I asked a question earlier, just as a refresher, because I know it's been you know at least a good year or so since we approved this initially. But this would affect all of our elementary buildings, the junior high, and the middle school. 
Those are the those are the buildings that we're looking at and being involved in this, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Goodman. I see him shaking his head. Thank you so much. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item 6.8 is approval of the first amended budget. May I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Education approves the first amended budget for 2020-2021 as presented. Support. Are there any questions or discussion? Would we like Mrs. Rogers to just walk us quickly through for our community's sake? Yes. Yes, please. Thank you, Mrs. McGinnis. Ms. Rogers, if you would come up, please. Thank you. Mrs. McLean can share these couple of slides for I'm just waiting. There, there we go. go. Thank you. Okay. The first slide is about is the revenue changes that we've seen since the original budget in June. Um, there is a, a large volume of change, as you can see, 9.2 million from the budget you approved in June. I'm going to say this is probably the biggest change I've seen in amending a budget. Um, and it's COVID has really changed things, so I think when we get past this COVID in next year or so, hopefully we'll go back to our original, the way we used to budget. But right now we've lost a lot of our local revenue. Um, a lot of our fees that we collect, we're not been able to you know, run athletics. We haven't been able to run community ed most of the year. We've lost a lot of our local revenues, transportation, rentals, fees. Um, athletics, community ed, a lot of that we've lost. Um, special education, that was just um, a combination of everything, just what I tried to budget in June. This happens every year, and then what, what really came through with the state and the ISD, when you add those all together, that was just 125000 Where you're really going to see it is we have um, a lot of one-time money, like in the state aid funding, we have one million in one-time funding from the state, and then we have 4.3 million in one-time money from the federal that we didn't know about in June. So all that's happened since June. And then another reason why the state aid is up so much is we had, you, you guys had proved a $400 student reduction because that's what was being told to us back in last May and June. They actually were saying 700, you guys went with 400, and it actually was a balanced budget because the revenue came in a lot better in August than they had anticipated. So that's where you see a lot of the changes. And then um, we have the shared service and the Renaissance Virtual Academy. Um, their FTEs both grew, and the shared service grew six or grew one thousand uh, around 100 students. That's about all we're allowed to grow because we're only allowed to grow 10 percent. And then the Renaissance Virtual also grew about 100. So you're looking at around 754,000 more revenue there than we um, had in the budget, and more than about 856,700. And then um, our at-risk title allocations, from the ones that we were told back in May, the initial allocations to what they tell us in about August or September were up. 235,000 in all our title programs. Those allocations were up too. And then every year our MIPS are offset is always up. So, and that's up a million, but you'll see that the expense side of our retirement goes up just as much. So that's our revenue and you're up in over 9 million. But as I like to say, about 5.3 million of that is the one-time money from the state and the federal government. Um, human uh, for 2021 expenditures, the changes that you see from what you approved in in um, June, you got your human resources is up 1.5 million. Your shared service and your Renaissance are um, both up, but the revenue was up too, so there isn't a big difference there. Your MIPSers retirement 
that I had to spread is up over 900,000. The revenue was around a million, so those pretty much equal. And then uh, we had some layoffs, and we had um, layoffs, and then we had less use of subs and stuff at the beginning of the year when we weren't in session. We had about a month there where we ha saved some money there. So that's all the savings from not opening up um, school on time and having a lot of um, not in person throughout the year that we weren't anticipating in June. And then your Title I at risk is up just as much. I have to do the expenses as much as the revenue goes up when our allocations go up there. We are um, bringing back some curriculum budget. That was one of the reductions that you approved in June when we thought we were going to be 400 students down. But since we weren't, we're bringing back the curriculum budget of 130,000. Um, and then you approved the dog therapy today, so I had to put that in as an expenditure. And then um, the Clarkston virtual curriculum, that is uh, the new virtual program that we had to start this year because of COVID, all the students that didn't come into person. That is being part, that is being covered by the federal funding. We're covering that. We're allowed to pay for uh, distance learning curriculum out of that. COVID, uh, other expenses that are non-personal expenses is another 732,000 that we've been able to cover with our federal. Majority of that is PPE. Uh, PPE stuff is what the majority of that would be. And then uh, communicate, community education, I reduced expenses by 190,000 because I, re I had to reduce the revenue. So we weren't running the first six months of the school year. We haven't run any community eds. We haven't had the instructors, and we didn't have the expenses. So, so with that, our total expenditures adjustments are up 4.75 million. And then um, ECC transfers. Uh, ECC is um, having another year of struggling. They cannot collect a tuition. They're having a lot of problems with not being in person. Um, so we are going to have to transfer over five, 500. We're going to have to take away the 62000 that they give us every year. And then I'm recommending at this point that we transfer 500000 to them. And uh, so total transfers adjustments are 578. Is it, those are our expenditures. So your original budget you approved was a negative 861,000. I am proposing an amended budget is going to actually be a surplus of over 3 million. And that is all based on all that federal funding and one-time money received. So you are getting a 3 million surplus, but you're, running, you're doing that surplus on a 5.3 million one-time. Just to reemphasize, Ms. Rogers, that although we have a $3 million surplus, we have overextended by $5 million, yes. and that is covered by, by one-time money. So when that disappears, we'll actually be facing within a year or so, depending on when the federal money decides that it's yes. going to be going away, of a $2 million deficit. So it is a very um, difficult time to long-term forecast within budget. I think we're going to continue to keep light on our feet with our focus on kids. <clears throat> I think we have enough right now that we'll be able to weather a couple years of ups and downs. And that, you know, looking at this amended budget, I think it really is, is forward looking at what we need to accomplish uh, as your board administration team. Yeah, I think that's why we got to really watch where this next second round or third round or whatever you want to call this supplemental funding that's still coming through. We don't know yet. Um, they're saying it's going to be 450 per pupil. They haven't said what the restrictions are going to be on it. They've been saying we'll have to 2023 to most likely spend it. That's why I think it's imperative that we hopefully can move that to next year to fill the hole of the $5 million that we're going to lose this year. So. so prepare for a very exciting budget cycle as we go into yeah. June. It's going to be different than any board member or administrator has ever experienced right. before. 
but I think on the, on the scope of the change we've adopted and, and took on this year, it's nothing we can't handle. All right. Thank you so much for yeah. the overview. Yeah, and the governor right now has her budget's out there, and it's $164 per pupil increase for us right now. So we'll know more as the Senate and the House put out their budgets, but that's what's out right now for next year. Any questions or discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the first amended budget. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item seven is our report items. 7.1 is our monthly finance report. Mrs. Rogers, you're at the podium. I will turn it back over to you. Yes. Um, this is the January financial update. And um, this is gonna still obviously have the budget that we're from our June budget that really isn't. It's, uh, I won't be able to get the one that you approved tonight and until the March update, but this is, um, this is as of January 31st with what you approved in June. The budget to actual revenues were at 49% and your budget to actual expenditures are at 48%. Um, your fund to equity at this point, end of January, is at 10.7 million. So there really isn't anything, any surprises going on or anything like that. This will look a lot different when I bring you the March update and I'm able to get the new amended budget in um, the financial update but um, and you were you were given all the check registers and the reports for January so if you have any questions or something that you would like clarified any follow-up questions for mrs. Rogers all right thank you very much mm -hmm. appreciate you being here Item eight is discussion items. We have none tonight. Item nine is citizen comments. Citizens are welcome to address the board on any topic at this time. Let me bring back up my Zoom. I know uh, Mr. Fry had indicated he wanted to address the board. Um, citizens who are watching via Zoom, now is the time if you wish to address the board to go ahead and indicate your interest by doing so. Just click on the participants button and then the raise hand feature. So, Mr. Fry, if you, as soon as Mrs. Uh, McLean activates you, if you will state your name for the record, and you will have two minutes to address the board. Good evening. My name is Daniel Fry. Thank you, President Horst, for the opportunity to address the board. I'm a parent of two Clarkston students, a fifth grader, rising fifth grader, and a second grader. We've had an excellent experience at Bailey Lake Elementary, thanks to... Uh, Principal Galtieri, the staff, um, and uh, also Mrs. Raditz, who we've met this year in, uh, in her support of our children's enrichment activities. So I listened to the first presentation item with great interest. Um, with respect, President Horst, I, I disagree with your statement. I don't see a downside here. I fear, I fear there may be a downside uh, very selfishly in, in my household. Um, Trustee McGinnis mentioned uh, a concern that I share relating to let's not let talented kids fall short of their potential. Um, I fear the uh, reversion to 75th percentile rule, meaning um, no matter what situation you put a talented kid in, maybe they'll perform at the 75th percentile. Um, that was my experience. And um, I observed that advanced programs seem to be a competitive advantage among districts. Um, someone mentioned earlier in the meeting, anecdotally, that districts do choose to offer these advanced programs when they're threatened by neighboring schools of choice. Um, so I guess I, my question, and, and I'll, I'll take my answer offline, is has CCS modeled the, the revenue loss that will be triggered by this reduction in service level? Um, specifically, having just done this with science uh, curriculum recently, I wonder if we know uh, how ELA uh, and math tracking reductions in sixth grade might might affect revenues going forward. Uh, Dr. Ryan mentioned increasing uncertainty going forward. And, and obviously, that's the district perspective. But very personally, um, I'm really interested as a parent in how we can continue to challenge all students uh, at all levels in an equitable way. 
Uh, thanks again for the opportunity. I'll, I'll yield my time and uh, look forward to seeing what develops. Thank you so much for your comments tonight, Mr. Fry. Sorry, sorry. I'm not seeing anyone else who wishes to address the board at this time. Uh, we'll move on to item 10, information items. Our next Board of Education meeting is Monday, March 22nd. And trustees, although it says 5.30 on our agenda, um, I think just to accommodate everyone who needs to be here in person and needs a little extra time, we're going to move that to 6 o'clock, a 6 o'clock start time. Um, and then we will do that here in person and via Zoom. And as soon as we have that agenda settled, um, I think we'll just do what we did this time. Mrs. McLean is announce knowing how many administrators and other personnel we need in the room and what available space we have for citizens to join us in the boardroom in person. Item 11 is adjournment. May I have a motion, please? I move to adjourn. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Assuming no one opposed. The motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and good night.